appreciate. Amen. Thankful. Thank More than appreciation you. for what the Lord has done. My, my, Amen. My. Great work. We're part of a blood bought church. Thank Amen. Thank you for calling me, Lord. Thank you. One more time, I'd like to say it's so good to see each and every one of you today. Amen. Just so glad that you're here. Amen. Just trust the Lord will minister to you and help you today. Amen. And your walk with Him. The book of Exodus today, chapter 34. The book of Exodus in chapter 34. Yes, Lord. Exodus 34 and 4. Bring us to that. Understanding God. The Lord the Lord. Exodus 34 and 4. The Bible reads it this way. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and the fourth generations. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. You may be seated. I want to take my thought today from verse 6 where the Bible says, And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. For a few moments today, I'd like to speak to you on this thought. I want to talk to you about God's glory. God's glory. We find today that this is Moses' second trip to the mount. The first trip he had made, God had given him the covenant, the commandments. And we find and we understand that the Israelites had grown weary of waiting. And decided to take matters in their own hands. And they had uh, constructed themselves a God. Made of the, the jewels and the gold that they were wearing in the camp. And, and Aaron had fashioned this God. And they worshipped him. And we find that the anger of the Lord uh, rose up against the children of Israel. And many were slain that day because of their idolatry and their wickedness. And Moses had to make intercession For the children of Israel at that time. Now the time has come again that Moses has had to go back into the mount. And we find that prior to going into the mount in chapter 33 of Exodus. That Moses had asked of the Lord that he would show him his glory. And we find today that as Moses had prayed this prayer. That God indeed had allowed Moses to see his glory. To absorb All of his glory that he could withstand. We know that Moses had seen the hind parts of the Lord as he, of his spirit. Because God is a spirit, he has no bodily form. But we understand that Moses had seen the Lord as he had passed by and beheld him as he is. And now, once the Lord, now Moses again has seen the glory of God again. God has just essentially given him acceptance, and Moses has been made privy to something that man, since Adam and Eve, had never experienced. Adam and Eve had experienced God. The Bible says that he walked with them in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. And so now Moses is doing something, 
or seeing something that few have ever seen before. And now we know that God has hallowed this place, the mount where He is on Sinai. God has hallowed this place. And the Bible says that the cloud of the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai. The Lord had told Moses and He said this. He said, don't bring any man in the mount with you. He said, don't allow the animals to feed anywhere near the mountain. He said, just keep everybody away. You come alone uh, on this mountain. And the Bible teaches us, and it's where we learn the word Shekinah. The Bible says it teaches us that the Shekinah glory of the Lord fell upon this mountain, that it covered the mountain in a thick cloud of God's glory. We find that there's only seven times in the Bible that the Shekinah glory has been uh, moved or uh, done like that. Six of them have already happened, and there's one that is yet to happen. We find that it was here at Sinai. It was Israel with Israel in the wilderness. It was at the tent with Moses. It filled Solomon's temple. It was there with Mary at the conception of Jesus. It was present at the transfiguration of Jesus. And when Jesus returns, we find the book of Revelation in chapter 1 tells us that it will be present at the return of Jesus Christ the Lord. This Shekinah glory, it is the ultimate. It is the, uh, the, the, the revelation of God and who He is and what He is in His glory. It is pure in every essence of what it is. It is overtaking uh, to the mind, to the human being, that it almost makes people go into a stupor at the holiness of God when He reveals Himself to His people. I want you to think about this today as we consider who God is, as we consider who Jesus Christ is. In a lot of ways today, the holiness of the Lord has been defamed by many folks. It has been trod underfoot. It has been cursed. It has been made light of. It has been taken lightly. But I want you to understand today, the glory of God is no joke. It is something that a man that man uh, would long to see, long to be a part of. God is holy. God is holy in every attribute and aspect of who He is. There's no blemish in Him. There's no, there, there's no inconsistencies in Him. He is pure. He is undefiled. And He is holy. I read to you today in this Word, uh, that the Lord proclaimed Himself to Moses in His estate. And so the Lord, talking about, He addressed Himself as the Lord, the Lord God. And this is where we find the name Yahweh. This is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had known the Lord as this name. It was not a new revelation of God, but yet God was presenting Himself to Moses as the eternal and immutable God. I want you to understand today, there is no beginning for God. There is no ending for God. People have tried to wrap their minds around who God is, but I want you to understand, our mind does not have the capacity to wrap itself around the magnitude of an almighty God. Before the creation of this earth, He was there. And after the destruction and the the renewing of this earth, He'll be there. God is forevermore. The Bible teaches us He is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. That means that He just is. I can't tell you any other way than, than just to know that God didn't create Himself. He's just God. And God is to be worshipped as such, as the Almighty, as the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. The Deliverer of the moon and the stars. I tell you today, He is a gracious and a mighty God. And so the Lord tells Moses that He is merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. What He was saying, or Yahweh tells us, is just that simply that that is all He is and what He does. It is a proclamation 
of the saving acts of God. It's God's self-revelation proclaiming His very self to Moses. I'm telling you what, there's no other individual that has ever had a one-on-one -on -one course of revelation like Moses had with God. It is to you and I to read and understand this today that what a time it must have been there for Moses. And the Bible says that as God was doing these things that Moses immediately bowed himself to the earth in the respect and the reverence of who God is. Can I tell you today, where's our reverence for the Lord today? Where is the reverence for the mention of His name? People carelessly take His name in vain and just arbitrarily use the name of the Lord in vain. I tell you, any time that we mention the name of the Lord and we do not preface it in glory and honor and respect, we are taking the name of God in vain. It is not a byword. It is not something that we just care, carelessly toss about. We're talking about the Creator. We're talking about the Almighty. We're talking about who holds it all in the power of His hand. That His hand spans the breadth, the depth, the height, the width of heaven. Everything, amen, is in His control. This is the King of glory. This is our everything today. And I'm so glad today that He looks, amen, past the ignorance of men in His long suffering. Amen. Because there's a lot, amen, today, amen, who carelessly handle their souls, who carelessly handle, amen, the things of God in their life. There is no thought of eternity. There is no thought of the price to pay for iniquity. But I want you to understand, God said it here, that He will, amen, not by any main, means clear the guilty. Amen. The only way the guilty will be cleared is by and through the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. It is only by repentance. It is only by submission. Amen. That Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Will our slates be clean? But yet we find today that folks feel, amen, that there's no reason for them to repent. No reason for them to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. We find today that folks feel, amen, that everybody's going to heaven. I'm telling you now, everybody's not going to heaven. Uh, you might get close. You'll get as close as the judgment bar. But that'll be it. There's going to be a day of reckoning, amen, when the book of life and the books, amen, that are kept, amen, as a charter of our life, amen, are opened up. And the Lord judges us of both the good things and the bad things that we have done. I'm not talking to you of speculation today. This is inscribed in this book today to you and I, amen, that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He has given us opportunity today, amen, to do it now. Amen, to, amen, preserve ourselves for an eternal damnation. Amen, but what are we doing today? Moses bowed himself in the glory of God. But what are we doing today? Are we humbling ourselves in the presence of the Almighty? Are we humbling ourselves and yielding our hearts and our souls to Jesus Christ the Lord? I want you to understand this morning, amen, that this is, amen, the pivot of your life. This is, amen, everything your life consists of today. Amen, when it's over, when it's done, amen, eternity will bear out one of two things. You were prepared or you weren't prepared. Will you be like the wise versions? Will you have your oil? Will you have your lamps trimmed and burning? Or will you be unprepared? Heaven is not going to be for the faithless. Heaven is not going to be for those, amen, that are unfaithful. Amen. But heaven is going to be prepared for them, amen, who have made their calling and their election sure with the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be saying, preacher, you might, you're being mighty harsh this morning. No, hell's harsh. Eternity without God is harsh. 
Amen. But it's not God's decision. It's your decision this morning. It's your choice this morning. Amen. How that you spend your life. How that you approach the Lord God of heaven. How. Amen. That you worship Him or you don't worship Him. How you acknowledge Him or you don't acknowledge Him. I want you to know today. Amen. That the Lord is looking at you and I today. Amen. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is granting us mercy. Jesus died that we might obtain mercy. And thank God for that mercy today. I suggest this morning, amen, by everything that in us that we seek, that Shekinah glory of God. We find continuing in this 34th chapter of Exodus today that after Moses was through, amen, in the mount, the Bible says that Moses descended from the mount. And we find that the glory of God rested upon Moses. He was unaware, a man, of his visage, of, uh, of his visible appearance. And the glory of God was so bright upon Moses. It was that, it was just like that of the transfiguration of Christ. Uh, the glory of God was so great upon Moses that Moses had to put a veil upon his pet face where the people could bear to look at him. Oh, that we, the church, amen, could be those, amen, that could bear the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we can be the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. This world needs, amen, good influence. This world needs people today. Amen. That are committed to the cause of Jesus Christ the Lord. That have given up on their own selves. That have given up on their own wickedness. That have given up on their own lustful desires. Amen. And chosen. Amen. To follow the pure and the holy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you today that the Lord has stretched out His hand. Amen. Of mercy and deliverance to you and I. Some have accepted and some have rejected. But I suppose Submit to you today to you. Amen. The Lord is still calling, beckoning you to come to Him and allow Him to change your life. Allow Him, amen, to be a difference maker in your life. Allow Him to give you the peace that you long for and that you look for. Jesus said it Himself. He said, I didn't come to bring the world peace. Uh, he said, but I came to put you at variance. What that simply means is there's going to be a distinction, amen, between the saved and the unsaved. There's going to be uh, 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 an aggravation. There's going to be a malice between the saved and the unsaved today. I, I tell you this morning, God, help us, amen, to seek Your glory. Help us to seek Your way. Help us to hunger and thirst for the things that the Lord has done for us and is doing for this world today. Had we got what we deserve, we would already be in destruction. We would already be in torments. But thanks be unto God, amen, that He has given us grace. He has given us the opportunity to make things right today. Is it well with your soul? Is it well in your walk with Jesus Christ? Are you doing what you know you should be doing? Are you acting the way you know you should be acting? Uh, is your speech right? Is your life right? Is your heart right? Is your mind right today? I tell you these things can only be done by and through the power and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe it's time that we pray for the Shekinah glory of the Lord to fall upon our hearts and fall upon our lives. Maybe it's time that we seek the power of God afresh and anew. Maybe it's time that we understand that we have an adversary in the devil. He is seeking to destroy and devour us. He is seeking to destroy the foundations of God. Maybe it's time we tear down the fallacies of our mind that tell us everything's alright when everything's all wrong. Maybe it's time that we seek an order of prayer once again and allow the Lord to come by and minister to you and I. I'm telling you today, prayer makes a difference in our life. It makes, it helps us, amen, to overcome the trials and the tribulations of this life. The enemy is fighting the enemy is battling the enemy. Amen. Is doing everything that he can to cause division. 
The enemy is doing everything that he can to cause you, amen, to fall away from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's doing everything that he can to cause you to come become cold and indifferent to the things of God. But may I tell you today, the Lord is coming. May I tell you today that time is short on this earth. May I tell you today, amen, that we don't have the opportunity to play games with God this morning. Uh, God wants to pour out His glory upon His people. He has promised in His Word that in this day and in this hour, He would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. We are the time. We are the generation that has the greatest opportunity to see the return of the G of Jesus Christ. But will you be ready? Amen. Will you be prepared? Amen. For that day when the trumpet sounds and Jesus comes again. You say, preacher, you're just rehearsing an old script. You're just rehearsing things that we've heard all of our lives. People have come and people have gone and have not seen the return of Jesus. Can I say that only speaks to His mercy. That only speaks to His long suffering. That He's given everybody a chance. <coughs> To make it right before He shuts the door of salvation. Oh, everybody was making mockery of Noah. Everybody was making fun of Noah. When Noah was building an ark in the wilderness and no water to be seen, they thought he was mad. They thought he had absolutely lost his mind. But God said, Noah, you build a boat. My judgment's coming. The wickedness of this world has come up before me and my judgment's coming. It took Noah 120 years to build that boat, but the time came when Noah, when God told Noah to get on that boat and God shut the door. Amen. Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. What was that saying? No man opened it and no man closed it. Amen. It was done of God. And when, when peril was unleashed on this earth, who was trying to get in the ark? People. But they didn't listen to His preaching. They didn't listen to His exhortation. They didn't listen to the warning. They didn't heed the warning. They went on living their life the way they wanted to live. And what did it offer them? What did it give them? It gave them destruction, folks. It gave them an eternity away from a God that stretched out His hand and said, I'll save you. If you'll come to me. And much the same, this time it won't be an ark. And this time it won't be water. This time there won't be that one that's building something out in the midst of a wilderness for people to make mockery of. Today we're proclaiming the return of the Lord. Today we're exhorting folks, amen, to make Hey, sure that you're ready to meet God. But is it falling on deaf ears? Hey Amen. Do you believe today that Jesus is coming back? Do you believe today that there's coming a time when God is going to separate the sheep from the goats? When God is going to separate the wheat from the tares? I submit to you today, hear my warning. I'm sounding the trumpet. I'm sounding the alarm today. You don't have the time you think you have. You don't have much opportunity left. Jesus is swiftly coming. Amen. For a people that are prepared for Him. I think about how that uh, the Bible says that He'll separate the wheat from the tares. Every June, the last of May into June is the wheat harvest. We harvest wheat, we harvest oats. And when we harvest that wheat, we put that wheat in a bin. Every bit of the wheat that we harvest, we put it in the bin. In that wheat that we put in the bin, there's um, ryegrass seed. There's all different kind of weeds and stuff in that that we put in the bin. We don't throw it away. We put it all in the bin together to keep it for about 30 days. And then when we finish with the wheat harvest... Straws up, and we went back and planted the next crop behind the wheat. We begin to draw that wheat out of the bin. Yes, sir. And we got a cleaner 
that we run that wheat through. And so what happens is in that cleaner, when we take pour the wheat out of the truck and auger it into that cleaner, what it does, it falls on screens. Yes, sir. And the wheat seed will fall through the screens because we set them for wheat seed. And the other seeds will be augered. The ryegrass seed will be augered in a, 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 a buggy over here that we have. And then the other, the chaff, yes, sir. will fall out and fall on the, on the ground. And then the wheat seed is augered into another truck, amen, that we'll take to market. Sure. That we don't get docked for foreign material in the wheat seed. Right. Now we'll sell the ryegrass seed, but the chaff we throw away. Right. It's a process of cleaning. It's a process of making something whole. I want you to understand Jesus is going to run us through the cleaner. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is going to run us through the process. And He's going to put all the seed. He's going to put all of it there together. You and I, right there together. The saved and the lost, all together. And once the harvest is taken, He's going to separate the, those that are saved from those that are not saved. And those that are not saved are going to be cast into outer darkness. And those that are saved are going to be welcomed into the city of God. Where the ultimate glory of God will behold forevermore. We won't need a veil upon our face. Our eyes will be able to behold Him in His glory. The apostle wrote that we'll be as He is. We'll be like Him. What does that mean? It, <coughs> it means we're going to take on the glory Amen. Of the crucified. We're going to take on the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we're going to shine in the brightness of who He is. We're going to be a reflection of Jesus Christ the Lord. I submit to you this morning, don't miss out on God's glory. I submit to you this morning that there's nothing in this world worth missing out, amen, on who Jesus Christ is and meeting Him and feeling the power, the presence, the aura of who He is. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear Him today. Listen to His words. Let Him inscribe the laws of His love upon your heart, upon the tables of your heart. Allow Him to take the pen. Amen. And inscribe. Amen. Himself to you and abide with you forevermore. I tell you today, He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you with an unfailing love. He loves you right now, whether you're lost or whether you're saved. But His heart, His Spirit, his word, His hand is extended to you this morning if you'll only call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Your heart might be hardened this morning by circumstance. Your heart might be hardened by things, uh, unfortunate things that have happened in your life. But I'll tell you this morning that Jesus has the capacity to take a hardened heart and tender rise that heart. Amen. To love Him and live for Him and abide with Him. He has the capacity this morning to show you love like you've never known. You've never been loved until you've been loved by Jesus Christ the Lord. It is a pure and an undefiled love. I submit to you this morning, folks, uh, it is His glory. I feel His Spirit right here. It is His glory. It is His good pleasure. It is His right to come by. Amen. Touch us. Help us. Lift us up. Amen. In our moments of despair, in our moments of tragedy, in our moments of unknowing, in our moments of feeling like, Amen, we're overwhelmed. I'm telling you, He is the force in our life. Amen. That will help us regardless of where we are. If we'll but call. If we will ask. I talked about in just the recent future. Recent past, I'm sorry. Recent past, I've talked about the power of the ask. And I've heard it come back to me and folks will tell me and say, you know, 
It's all in the power of the ask. I ask. And it happened. Yes, Lord. God be the glory. And Jesus said, if you'll ask me, I'll come to you. Yes, he will. If you seek me, oh, you'll find me. Oh, if you knock, I'll open the door. Oh, the gifts of God. I you. won't forsake you. Oh, no, I won't interrogate you. Oh, no, he won't, you see, that's the thing about Jesus when we come and we fall on Amen. His mercies. It's not an interrogation. It's a forgiveness session. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all about His forgiveness. He doesn't wear us out for the things that we've done. He doesn't wear us out for the sins that we've committed. But with mercy, He says, tenderly, I forgive. That is the glory of God. You know, most time man has to interrogate you and belittle you before they'll forgive you. But Jesus does none of that. His forgiveness is pure. And His forgiveness is forgetfulness. Because He'll forget all about your past. He'll forget everything that you ever were. And when you step into the glory realm and you step into the glory of who He is, he only knows you as He is. Yes, Thank you, Lord. That's glory. He only sees you as His. He only acknowledges you as His. You. Moses said it. He said, Lord, He said, these people are a stiff-necked people. He said, they're hard-hearted. Yes, God, you know. He said, they're stubborn. They'll follow a pernicious way. At the drop of a hat. But Moses said, Lord, seeing all that, understanding that, understanding their penchants for the things that they do, he said, Lord, will you take us for an inheritance? It is no different for you and I today. We were idolaters, we were wicked, we were undone. And looking at everything that we were when we fell on our knees at Calvary and prayed that prayer, Lord, will you take me in as part of your inheritance? Jesus said, I will. One of the, the very thieves on the cross were railing on Jesus as they were hanging there for the crimes that they committed. Jesus there unjustly charged, unjustly crucified. They're railing him, mocking him, tempting him. If you be the Lord, save yourself, save us. Prove who you are. Do something miraculous. Do something awe-inspiring. Do something that will show these people who you really are. And you know Jesus did just that. Jesus did just that. Just that. Yes, he did. that thief made the realization that truly this is the Christ. And Jesus did something that showed him who he truly was. This thing. My God. Thank you, Lord. That's powerful, folks. We miss so much the power and the glory. We've heard it so much that we've become accustomed to it. We've become used to it. That the power of this gospel, the glory of this gospel doesn't affect us like it should. It doesn't humble us like it should. It doesn't cause us to stand in awe of the King of glory as we should. He's become just another person. It's sad to say, but we're guilty of it. That we've marginalized Jesus Christ because we've heard it all we've heard it preached every way it can be preached but I want you to understand we shouldn't be listening to the different ways it's been preached we should be standing in awe that it is the message that he's continually given us and that the message does not grow old and the message does not grow weak and the message does not lose its luster it is the power of the gospel that saves. 
It is the power of God. It is the power of the Word that changes folks. And when we refuse to acknowledge the power of God, the power and the glory of His Word, then we ourselves have crucified Him afresh and anew. I don't want to be guilty anymore of having a hand in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to glorify. I want to edify. I want to walk in His glory today. But for me to walk in His glory, i got to do what Moses did. i got to bow myself before Him. i got to humble myself before Him. i got to surrender my will to His will. i got to surrender my path to his path. Yes. I got to surrender my way to his way. I've got to surrender, amen, my actions to his actions. Right, right. Amen. You, the glory of God you, is there. It's ever present for you and I. We see it more clearly today than they ever saw it prior to the resurrection of Christ. It is that that because, amen, people come together, amen, the Lord. Reveals himself to those people. Why does it reveal itself to us? That we'll go out in the world and reveal him to others. You are the representation as children of God of his glory. Let that sink in just a moment. I'm going to say it one more time. You are as children of God the representation of the glory of God. Yes, my brother. What kind of job are we doing? Yes, my brother. What kind of job are we doing? Are we living a lackadaisical life in the faith? Or does our heart really desire and really burn for Jesus Christ the Lord? Are we quick to judge? Or are we quick to forgive? Right, right. Let us consider are we quick to call for wrath or are we quick to call for mercy? Yes, brother. Wow. Show us on the When they were railing on Jesus prior in his ministry, when they were railing on Jesus, you know what the disciples asked him? Yes. He, they said, Lord, shall we call down fire on them for their wicked acts? Jesus rebuked them. He said, I ain't come to destroy them. I came to deliver them. Yes, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so our penchant as sons and daughters of God shouldn't be to destroy. It should be to deliver. Yes, my Lord. Show us. Now that's gospel. Thank you for the word. That's the word of God. And when we share His glory, His glory does a work in people's lives yes, it does, that only we can marvel at. Because we surrendered ourselves to Jesus Christ the Lord. God's glory, His Shekinah glory, it's real. It's still in effect. It's here with us. It's just up to us to seek it. It's just up to us to pursue it. God will bless. God will move. If we'll just call upon His name. And allow Him the opportunity to use us for His glory. I've preached to you what the Lord's laid on my heart this morning. I've given it to you the best way that I know how to give it to you. And I trust this morning that it has caused us to think. It has caused us to ponder where we are in our walk with Jesus Christ the Lord. Are you like Peter at the crucifixion? Are you just in the midst of Jesus? Are you dragging behind? Are you just somewhere close to the crowd? Or are you following closely? Have you attached yourself to Him? Do you love Him with all of your heart, mind, body, and soul? today Jesus said in himself and I'm, I'm pulling in my parking space 
Jesus said in his, himself, he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's Jesus' words. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How's your heart this morning? Is your heart mangled? Is it tangled up? Is it divided? Jesus won't live in a divided house. And it can't stand. But Jesus can make your home whole. Yes, Lord. If you allow him to be the Lord of that home. Yes, my Lord. I want everyone to stand this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Nobody's looking around. If I were to tell you anything this morning other than what I've already said, we're not promised the next breath. It's only by His mercy that we'll make it through this day. It's by His mercy that we got up this morning. Whether you know Him as your Savior, whether you don't. It's by His mercy that we were able to get up this morning. He gave you a clean slate today. Brand new mercy. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to show your appreciation to Him for what He's already done for you today? If you don't know Him as your personal Lord and Savior, you can surrender your heart to Him and allow Him to come in and change your life. You can't change your life. You can't do it. You can't save yourself. And you don't need to try to clean yourself up before you come to the Lord. Just come as you are. He knows how to help you. If you love Him today, if you're serving Him today, then what we do is we live for Him to the best of our abilities. That we shun the wrong and do that which is acceptable in the sight of God. Today we have a decision. Today we have a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to follow Him closely? Are you going to ignore the warning signs? Are you going to ignore the call? He's calling you today. He's asking you to come. He's asking you to allow Him the opportunity to love you like never before. So this morning, this altar's open. For whatever your need may be, to one and all, this altar is open this morning for you to come and seek the presence of the Almighty today.